national hits all the time. We are family. Max Scherzer, double digit K's. We're busting ours to kick yours. Fun to watch. Minus 15. Respect all, fear none. Into the upper deck. Intensity is not a perfect. From inside the warehouse, it is the Mass and All Access Podcast, brought to you by Marymount University. Visit visit MarymountSaints.com to learn more about our student athletes and programs today. I am Paul Mancano. I am joined by Bobby Blanco. But perhaps most importantly, today we have Olivia Witherite, our social media manager, running the show. Um, Bobby, I've I've never felt more scared in my entire life. No, no, no. So she's done this before. This is not new for her. No, true. Um, again, shout out to interns Brendan and Cam for doing a great job all season <laughs> long. But <laughs> they picked it up so easily, and this is the first time they've ever done it, maybe except for Brendan. And now Olivia's back there who has done this before, and she's been freaking out all morning. She has. So, I've never seen her more nervous about something that is 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 not worth getting nervous about, I would r- say. Right. No, it's <laughs> totally not. It's literally just pushing a button because it's for a podcast, and obviously we do way more cooler stuff other than this podcast on this program. But it's it's Livia, you're doing a phenomenal job. She really is. We can is. see what you're doing. She's doing it. And we're liking it. And she's giving us a thumbs up as she's doing yeah, it. Yeah, she's got the headphones on. She's, she's Just a five to a player that a, a five to a Olivia with her, right? So she, tweets, tweets, Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> live stream, live stream. What's the fifth tool? Uh, video editing. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Photoshop. Photo, f- Photoshop. Photo, f- shooting photos. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Our Instagram is lit because of her and our Snapchat. So give Mass and Orioles a follow on all of those platforms to see the best from O-Dog. There we go. Uh, we got a good podcast for you today. Special day around the the world, generally. Yeah, I wanted to, uh, yeah, almost I wanted, half our population. I want to bring this up. I was driving in this morning, listening to Sports Talk Radio, and you know how they do those. Uh, this is Boomer Esiason with the CBS Sports Minute. Things. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. Nationwide it used to be like the Jim Rome. Right. Yeah, he does them too. He still he still does them too. Does he? Yeah. Um, but Boomer Esiason, fellow Terp, go Terps, um, is left-handed, and today is International Left-Handers Day. And Paul, guess who's pitching for the Orioles tonight? Tell me who. That'd be John Means. John Means. Their main staple lefty in their starting rotation. And I was actually having this conversation. We can get into John Means. I, I want to talk about it because on the front page of MLB.com today is Rookie of the Year polling updates. Mm-hmm. And they have American League and National League. And John Means is in there, which is interesting. So that's that's just polling the general public. It's uh, from um, Richard Justice from MLB.com. Oh, He's yeah. um, a good reporter for them. I think it's just him. Um, oh, here we go. The poll was done by asking MLB.com reporters to rank their top Ooh, three reporters. choices. Yeah, so MLB.com reporters have contributed to this poll, and John Means is third. He got two first-place votes. I um, believe it. I mean, it's it's hard not to keep him off that list. Yeah, um, and uh, for a while we've been talking about he could have been a front-runner. Now, um, Jordan Alvarez for the Royals has just been oh my god insane yeah. as of late. So he'll probably take home the, the hardware. But I still think it's worth mentioning that John Means is in the conversation. Also, he had some time on the IL, which kind of probably hurt his campaign right. in terms of uh, getting votes and stuff like that. I, I'm not advocating that he 100% should be the American League Rookie of the Year, but yeah. I think it's awesome that he just another adds to his story of how, you know, we talk about the few bright spots that Orioles have had this season. Yeah. He's uh, by far... One of them, if not the best, the brightest one yeah. in terms of he's going to finish possibly yeah. in the top three of uh, AL Rookie of the Year voting. Yeah. And when you look at most valuable Oriole this year, I think Mancini probably has been more valuable. But yeah, the, 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 the way that was kind of expected and the way that means with no expectations right. whatsoever on him this year has gone out and put, put himself in a place where he might be able to win AL Rookie of the Year. I'll tell you, I... Didn't I was not really following this guy uh, Alvarez for the Astros, and then when the Orioles played the Astros, and I saw his numbers, and I was like, he's hitting like three thirty. Yeah, I was Ash- like, Ash- who Ash- is Ash- this Ash- kid? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was. Um, he's insane. <laughs> yeah. Um. So Justice also mentions a little nugget here that John Means is the first homegrown Orioles starting pitcher to make an AL All Star team since Mike Mussina. He did it five times, most recently in '99, and then 
John Means is also the fifth Orioles rookie, the first since 1966 to be named an All Star. Wow. Forgot those nuggets from back in July. Yeah, which is uh, pretty incredible. So congratulations, John Means, and keep it up. You're going tonight. Happy Left Handers Day. Um, you're not left handed, are you? I'm not left handed. Yeah, no part of me is. That's that's devil's work. In there. the <laughs> in the um, that um, like the thing that uh, the CBS Sports Minute, whatever that I was listening to, that pop, had it pop in my mind. Uh, Boomer Esiason talks about like the different advantages that certain left-handers have across certain sports. Oh, really? Which is kind of in- which I thought was interesting. Like, apparently, they're not very good at racquetball, or because of the, such a small area, and usually with right. I mean, it's just hard that for makes them. sense. Yeah, but I know, played squash. I could tell you, it would be hard to play yeah. squash left-handed. Um, but you know, for tennis, they get a specific. They can get a specific spin on the ball that right-handers can't get, Ooh. which makes it very hard to. Uh, okay. Baseball, obviously, pitchers have a very particular spin on the ball that can yeah. kind of fool. Um, hitters. I was having this conversation a while ago with some friends about like why left-handers are so coveted in baseball, uh, both pitching and hitting. It's right. just because well, they're they're just unique, and yeah. and hitting left-handers is hard, and being a left-handed hitter is you know you, the way your body torques from your left hand. It's just for whatever reason it's different. Yep, and they can get more power on the ball than your typical right-hander. Can. And you know when you have so many a lot of good lefty hitters in baseball, you want a lefty pitcher because yeah. they just don't see the ball the same way. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's a good point. I and I think of football where it's like a left-handed quarterback. Suddenly, the the right tackle becomes more much more important right. than the left tackle. Yeah. I remember watching Mike Vick, and it was like you. That's suddenly their blind side. Um, and receivers have said like you know, with the first time you catch a football from a left-handed, if you're used to a right-handed yeah. quarterback, it like kind of freaks you out because it's going backwards. It spins like, differently. Wait, yeah. what? <laughs> it's like uh, toilets in yeah. Australia. Yeah, exactly. Spin the other way. The other way that around. always that always boggles my mind. Yeah, there, Bobby. Yeah, this is a whole a gravitational pull. <laughs> Do you think there's anything to be said about, because he also mentioned left-handed hitters are closer to first base than right-handed hitters. Oh, yeah. And I was having, but like, they're that back they can get there faster. It, though. Yes. Right. And so this, I brought this up, and this is, I, I, the only thing that came to my mind that it was an advantage was this, Ichiro Suzuki mm-hmm. was so good. Obviously, he was a phenomenal hitter, one of the best hitters of all time. But I think he was also partially so good because he understood that concept. Yeah. And he would intentionally, like, swing his body towards first base so yeah. if he did make contact his body was already moving down the line yeah. towards first base because otherwise if you think about like think take bryce harper for a power left-handed hitter he swings with such force his momentum starts going backwards true so he has to kind of regather himself before he can start taking down the line true whereas suzuki was pushing himself down the line which was like inc- incredible mind that he came up with that and was just like oh wait yeah i can just get a kind of a head start and it's funny because it kind of is against the baseball wisdom when you watch it, it's like oh he bails out and as a kid you're taught never to bail out with that yeah. uh, with your first step like step towards the ball step right. towards the pitcher yeah and it looks like i mean obviously he wasn't a power hitter but it looks like he's not going to be able to even make contact because right. of that swing and it's funny because otani i think shohei otani for the angels has a slightly similar swing yeah. he does the same type of thing that ichiro obviously he's one of his idols and he kind of bails out with that swing yeah and that's a good point bobby and it's because you're you are a step closer but i feel like you but your back's to it it might take you a little bit longer to get to top speed whereas yeah. if you're a right-handed hitter and you finish you can that kind swing. of follow your momentum toward exactly. the first base. You finish that follow through, and all of a sudden you're you know like yeah, you take one step and you've got momentum. Right, your your momentum's already like w- when you finish your swing, yeah. going to toward down the line. So yeah. you can kind of make contact, go drop bat, and, and run. It's yeah. Whereas yeah. left-handed, you could be kind of taking a step back. Right. You're closer, but your your momentum's going the opposite yeah. way versus a right-handed. Well, hitter. what's the thing? They always um, you know obviously there there are certain players that hit one way and feel the other way. And it's incredibly, which way is the common way that you hit right-handed and well, field left? No, no, no the other way, way around. Because that's like Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper right. is a left-handed hitter, but he throws right-handed. He throws righty. Yeah. And it's incredibly rare to see somebody the other way around, right? Yeah, uh, throw, bats righty, but throws lefty. Right. There is someone, oh man, oh, this is going to bug me, I can't remember. I think there's someone actually on the Orioles who does that. Actually, you know what who was? I think it was Kevin Gosman. Was it? I think Kevin Gosman throws right and bats left. I'm that's double funny. check that. Which, up. you know, you wouldn't get many chances to see. But. Right, correct. <laughs> right, exactly. That's why it was so, whenever it happened, it was so, I just, that's why it stuck in my mind. Because right. the few times that he pitched in an early game when he was with the Orioles and he batted, had yeah. to bat, it was like, oh, look, yep, he bats left, throws right. So, uh, what is the science behind that? Do you know I why no it's idea. rare that that happens? No. I also idea. don't know how somebody. It could also just be very random. Like, they started yeah. throwing a ball right handed and then. 
you know, when they ever picked up a bat, they just started swinging, le- you know. Right. When you're a small child, you don't know any different. Yeah. You just that's, do whatever feels natural to you. Right. That's a good point. Because I, you know, I obviously did not have much of a baseball career, so I can't <laughs> say. But, like, it always, and the way that switch hitters develop is always interesting to me. Because that is just an unbelievable skill. I mean, it, it kind of mind-boggling when you think about it, that they can do it from both sides of the plate like that. It's just such a, a weird skill to have, but uh, an interesting one. Yeah. Um, Looking up some Joey record. Yeah. So producer Olivia Witherite just texted <laughs> us to let us know um, that Joey Rickard is also one. He bats right and throws lefty too. Interesting. So that's the other way around. That's kind do of... You think, wait, so, bats right? Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. So do you think part of it is when you're a kid, you just throw right-handed? Like as when you're like the first time you throw a ball, you throw right-handed. Yeah. And then when you... I, well, I think, I think a lot of times, what, from what I understand, a lot of times, like back to the switch hitter thing, mm-hmm. I think it's parents, coaches, whoever realize at a young age that this kid or can do both, yeah, or they just force it upon them. They're like, hey, you can be yeah. a better player if you swing from both sides of the plate. Right. Let's let's start. It's like learning a language. You know how learning a language is easier when you're a small child, yeah, because you're. Your so brain it, is more like observant of information. Yeah. It's easier to do that. So it kind brain of elasticity like, is right. what that's called. Nice, yeah. nice, nice pull. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like that, whereas like your muscles are more open to, or more elastic. Yeah, <laughs> sure. To, to learn. Elastic. To become accustomed to swinging a bat either way. So it's yeah. like, you know, I think a lot of switch hitters, again, no science behind this. I'm not positive, but a lot of switch hitters probably were taught at a young age by like a coach or a parent yeah. to swing both sides because, you, it may, you, you know, if you were able to do it, it makes you a more valuable player, a better player down the line. And something that I've heard a lot, I think I've heard it from tennis players the most probably, is sometimes players can become, certain sports can become ambidextrous if at a young age they break one of their arms or one of their wrists yeah. and they're forced to play with the other. So like a tennis player who's a righty, maybe when they were a kid they break their arm, their right arm, they're forced to play lefty. And because of that, they spend a month or two with that cast on hitting a ball left-handed and they suddenly become ambidextrous. And also that, that rings a bell and I will not be able to pull this player like I did Kevin Gosman. But I feel like there was a basketball player who was like right-handed but shot free throws left-handed for that reason. Really? Like when he was a small child, he broke his wrist and the only thing he could do was shoot free throws yeah. with his left hand. So he does everything right-handed, dribbles, taking right. a jumper right-handed, but when he goes to the line, he shoots left-handed because that's what he did when he was a kid. So this is That's an, crazy. <laughs> I have to bring this up because, uh, you know, I'm a diehard Sixers fan. Yeah. Um, ben Simmons is a lefty. Yeah, but there's a theory going around because you know how he's a horrific shooter, just yes. can't shoot. Looks like he doesn't know what he's doing. There's a theory that he's actually right-handed and needs to shoot with his right hand huh. because if you see, like, if you watch him play, he tends to go right most of the time. So, yeah. like, if he's got a floater, he's going to go with his right hand or something. So, and yet he shoots with his left hand, it looks totally off. Yeah. So it's there's like an internet conspiracy theory that Ben Simmons is actually a right hander who for some reason thinks he's a lefty <laughs> and nobody can try and, to convince him the no, other way around. Yeah, like, no, you're actually right-handed. Nope. Yeah. No, I'm not. It's like, all right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy national left, left, international left-handed day to John Means and all you lefties out there. Um, Keep doing what you're doing. Watch out for those schmears when you're writing. Um, <laughs> and I, well, that was a thing. I wonder why, you know how like they say they're old like stories about uh, kids and nuns would like teach the lefty like crack a whip and yeah. teach the lefties to a use ruler, their right hand like the ruler stick yeah yeah not an actual whip yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> use their right hand to, to write but they because like they thought it was devil like is that an actual thing uh, like, prob- <laughs> yeah I mean you and I both went to Catholic school probably that's yeah. not very out of, out of the realm of possibility for <laughs> yeah. a Catholic but my best friend growing up in, in, in grade school was left handed and I would always like I was like why do you tilt your paper like that like right. it's so it's weird my like OCD kicked in and I was like that's not how you what are you doing like yeah. it's that's straightened up and he's like no because like if I do that then my hand smears what i've written but you know because we were writing pencil back then so it yeah. just i was like oh <laughs> wow i did not think of that yeah huh. that i also i will say lefties tend to have terrible handwriting yeah he has a hand his handwriting was atrocious but so is mine so who am i to say there we go um so john means good luck tonight happy international left handers day god bless um I, you know, earlier uh, I mentioned Trey Mancini. I just want to touch on him. We, 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 we got to talk on him every single podcast. Trey Dinger. Um, two more home runs yesterday. One in the first game, one in the nightcap. Uh, the, the, what amazes me is I was looking up, like, his home run chart. He hits, this year especially, has hit just as many home runs to right center as he has to left center, which is just unbelievable. The, the fact that he is going opposite field with yeah. so many... And um, something that I, I noticed also yesterday that, you know, 
um, so many players in today's game, I feel like, have this crazy uppercut swing where they are trying to put the ball out. And he is sitting here with, what, 28, 29 homers after yesterday? And he is doing it with such a, an incredibly level swing that it feels like he, he just is trying to put a good swing on the ball every time. He's not trying to hit a home run every time he comes up to the bat. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a level swing that also, two of those pitches, I think both those pitches yesterday that he hit out, were up in the zone. One of them, the first one in the day game might not have even been a strike if he'd let it go. Yeah. But because he has that level swing and he's not to, trying to lift it up, he, he just puts a level swing on it, takes the ball the opposite way, and it just goes out. Yeah. Um, what a good hitter. <laughs> Strong, I mean, professional hitter. He's becoming, yeah. we talked about this, I think even last week, just he's become one of those, one of the best hitters in the game. And that's why he's so valuable. We, we did talk about it last week because we're yeah. talking about how not only that, his motion, yeah. but also his ability to cover the entire plate. Yes. And how he's getting better, which is kind of a scary thought, but he's getting better at that process of, of batting. Earlier this season, especially when he struggled, he seemed kind of like tight at the plate and, yes. and would tight in his swing too now he's way more open and, and is able to get pitchers get pitches that are pitched to him outside right um, on the other side of the plate or even inside you know he's now able to like extend and bring real back in his his swing yeah and now he's hitting more balls than he's ever had in his career and the numbers are showing that yeah he's been incredible absolutely um, it's also crazy to think someone brought this up a friend brought this up to me last night mm-hmm. he's like on pace to hit 40 home runs yeah, he's gonna hit forty home runs. Well, hopefully, but well, yeah. he's at twenty nine already. There's only you know he's played yeah. one hundred thirteen games. We've got a month and a half left. Yeah, he can easily hit eleven home runs. Yep, in the amount of time. You know, God willing, he stays healthy. Right, he doesn't have to go back on the IL. But I mean that. I mean, obviously, we can talk about you know juiced balls, yeah. and yeah. that's a whole different conversation. But nonetheless. 40 home runs by Trey Mance, that's impressive. It and is. And that's another one of those bright spots on a bad season to, to kind of go back and, man, remember when yeah. Trey hit 40 bombs? Well, it's, yeah, one of those seasons where it's like, because everybody's doing it right now, it's like 40 home, home runs doesn't mean what it used to. Right. It's like, that's still a heck that's of a an lot accomplishment. Of home run, yeah. yeah. I mean, we, I Especially think Especially when his previous career high was 24. Yeah. I think about, like, Brady Anderson, his 50 home run season. It's yeah. like, there, there's certain milestones that are, like, so incredibly hard to achieve. To achieve, and if he, even if this is the, even if he hits forty this year, and it's the only time he hits forty, that's a pretty impressive accomplishment. Yeah, It'd be like, oh yeah, he was hit forty that one year. Yeah, and, and yeah, that's also funny because I remember back in what was it twenty fifteen? I keep, I'm sorry, I keep bringing up Bryce Harper on this podcast, but Bryce Harper won the NL MVP, and he only hit forty. He led the league and with forty two home runs. Right, and right. nowadays, that's like that barely gets you in the top five of voting if you hit forty two home runs because. The league, league, you know, MVPs this year's this season are going to have almost fifty bombs. Yeah, uh, you know, I think there were like Mike Trout, uh, Christian Yelich, they're at thirty nine already. Uh, Cody Bellinger's at thirty eight. Like they're all going to be over fifty by the time the season's end if they're all playing every day. Yeah, so, um, I don't think has I don't think Manny ever hit forty in a season. Oh, Manny, his high his, was, was like 33. 30 something. Um, Two but. baseball records. <laughs> I'm already there. Uh, let's see. 37 in 2018 oh, okay. total combined between twice. Baltimore and uh, and the Dodgers. And then, thir- yeah, he did do it twice. Oh, no, 2016. No, no, no. 2016, he had 37. Oh, yeah, that's right. And he had 35. But total 34. last year. He had 24 in Baltimore alone. Yeah. Um, in almost the same amount of games. Right. 30 less games, but still. Yeah. But it, it's also great to see, you know, as as <laughs> – with so many of these young guys on this team, when you see them get hot, a lot of times in the back of your mind, you're thinking, man, it's just going to come back to earth in a little bit, and it's nice that he's having this hot stretch, but obviously it's not going to last. For Mancini, to see him go through an incredible first couple months of the season, then dip down, then come back on the other side, it was really incredible. Yeah, he was hurt early this season, right? And then he went through that yeah. terrible two-week stretch, and he still has 29 bumps. Bless you, Olivia. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look at the list of players he has more home runs than. Javi Baez. I'm just going off MLB.com, so bear with me. Uh, Alex Bregman, uh, J.D. Martinez, Mike, Max, Max Muncy, uh, Moose, Kyle Schwarber, Trevor Story, Nolan Arenado, wow. Josh Donaldson, Paul Goldschmidt, Manny. Bryce is down here somewhere, too. Um, Xander Bogarts. I mean, Anthony Rendon for the Nationals. I mean, he's George Springer. Gary Sanchez. Gary Sanchez was one of the hottest hitters at the time. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, just a couple months ago, and he, he stuck at twenty five home runs. So, yeah, I mean, Trey again, one of those spots where you can't overlook. You have as an Orioles fan, as people who cover this team in, in a season like this, you really have to yeah. sit back and appreciate. I mean, if you're not gonna, if you, 
if you're going to tune out the game because they're bad, at least tune in when John Means is pitching, when Trey's at the bat, because um, this team, is, is they have fun spot, They have fun parts, and they're, 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 it's still fun to watch. And they've hit a lot of milestones, some good, some bad. But they are statistically having a very weird season in a lot of ways, yeah. as in many art teams around baseball. But they've hit so many weird records at some point. Bobby, I decided to, to bring a, a few, look at a few. Yes. And uh, play a little game. Uh, I think we actually probably come up with a better title than this, but it's called Guess That Oriole. Okay. I'm going to give you several stats, and I want you to guess who on the Orioles, and, and, and anybody who has played for the Orioles this season. Okay. So this, this, this is the full list of guys who have played for the Orioles this season. Should I not and look I at be, our notes? Are they on there? Uh, no, I put the answers in a separate... Google Doc. Okay, cool. Because I am smart. Right. Um, there are eight of them. I, don't, I guess because of Cal. Who knows? I think I just got lazy after eight. It's a like, good eh. number. Um, so I'm going to give you a bunch of stats, and you try to guess guess that Oreo. Being put on the spot. All right. Put on the spot. I'm in. Indeed. I like right. games. Don't com- don't look at my computer. Bro. I'm not. I'm not. All right. I promise. First one. <clears throat> this is the only player on the, uh, who has played for the Orioles this season to catch, pitch, and play first base for the Orioles at some point. To catch, pitch, catch, pitch, and play. Oh, um, uh, our good buddy, uh, Jesus Sucre. Hey, I yeah. That one. All right, go. good start. That one was, a, I, I thought, a tougher one, but you got that immediately. I th- yeah. No, I think the catching was the key because there's only been, like, a handful exactly. of catchers up here. So, yeah. Yeah. I was, my first thought was Wilkerson. Right, but he hasn't caught again. Well, has yeah. he played first base either? Probably just pitched and played the Probably not, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Sucre. Okay, cool. Cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Jesus cool. Sucre, who... Probably not at the forefront of your mind right now because he has not been on the big league team in a while. I don't think he's even in the organization anymore, right? Didn't uh, he leave? Isn't I, he on like a, a list? You, yeah, the restricted list, yeah. I think. Yeah. He did hit uh, 283 in 50 games for Norfolk. Yeah. Um, and uh, so there you go. Uh, Jesus Sucre, only guy. Number two. One for one. This player is hitting 344. Oh, this also doesn't include yesterday's stats. I put this together. Uh, okay. Yesterday. So sorry, Bobby. Uh, Cutting off at the twelfth. Got it. This player is hitting three forty four with a nine thirty two OPS in interleague play. Interleague play. How many interleague games have they played? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so three forty four against NL teams. I'm gonna say Hanser Alberto. That's incorrect. Dang. Yeah, but that would be a good guess because of how high his batting average. That and I just feel like he's got like just odd stats. Overall, yeah, you know, like against left-handed, very pitch, different, right. very big discrepancy. Yeah, so teams. I just felt like that was, you know, he would have like just crazy numbers against randomly interleague play for, for no yeah. reason. I don't know why. Pedro Severino is the answer. Ah. He has played nine games, I believe, interleague games. He has five hits against the Rockies, three against the Padres, and three against the Giants. Did he play against the Nationals? I guess it was only a two-game series way back when. Yeah. Um. And that, I guess I could have guessed, 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 guessed that as well just because he played in the National League, so he's familiar with those pitchers. All right. If Kevin Gossman is still playing, I would call this Goss that Oriole. Goss, <laughs> Goss that Oriole. <laughs> All right, number three. This is... Wait, what? Oh, yes. I re- realized I wrote that down wrong, but I know what it means. Okay. This, yeah, I'm confused this too. <laughs> pit, this player is the only Orioles pitcher to collect a hit oh, all year. Oh, pitcher. Mm-hmm. Um, I wrote this is the only Orioles <laughs> player. Orioles player. I was like, I was like, wait, well, wait. <laughs> I, they can't be that bad. All of Trey, all of Trey, <laughs> all of Trey Mancini. That's it. Um, you Orioles. thought you thought it was Hanser Alberto? Nope, that was Trey Mancini. All right, only Orioles pitcher to get a hit this year. John Means. John Means. All right. Did you know that? Or no. Did, wow. No. Just I, guessed it. He was my first thought, and then I thought might be a trick question. Might be like Kashner, just because he's not on the yeah. team anymore. But then I was like, I vaguely remember us celebrating. Like, what can John Means not do? Oh, because yeah. like he, he like had a great outing that game and also got a base hit. So John Means is batting a thousand. Fun fact: he's <laughs> uh, hit in two games, but walked in one and didn't have a plate appearance. And the other one went one for one. All right, I'm, I'm two for three right now, and I don't mean to brag or <laughs> jinx myself. But I feel like I am well suited to play this game. I have the well, weirdest good. memory for just most, the most random information. Definitely so. more suited to play it than two interns in a Oh, my God. We did not do well in that game. Let's that was bring, hard. That's not that was that really up. hard. We'll All right. Next year. Two for three. Number four. This is the 
only this player played in only one game in April, one game in June, and one game in July, but he played in 13 games in May. What? Isn't that weird? That is weird. One game in April, June, and July each. Can I ask a question? Sure. Is it a pitcher? Or a position player. I don't know if I can really reveal that. I'll, I'll, I'll give Well, because it. it makes more sense if it was a pitcher. Right, right. It's a position player. It's a position player. Okay, that's more wacky. Yeah. Um, this one's a tough one. I'm trying to think of a player who wouldn't play every day. So I'm kind of leaning towards a catcher. But, like, they didn't, you haven't used, like, too many emergency catchers. So I don't think that would be it. Um, all right. Dang. I'll just sip my I guess I just, latte. I really just jinxed myself. <laughs> All the, I, I, I don't even I'm know. I'm well what. suited. <laughs> yeah, I, just, said. I know. I, oh, wow. I really don't. Th- oh, um, you were getting hot. DJ Stewart. Ooh, that's a good one, actually. Uh, <laughs> that is incorrect. That's incorrect. Uh, but that is a good guess because he had that concussion yeah. game, obviously. Uh, the, you were getting hot with the catcher. Austin wins. Austin wins. Okay. Austin wins. Um, he, uh, weirdly, also, has a lower slugging percentage than he does an on base percentage in 13 games, 16 games. Wait, this year. what? That's not possible. Oh, wait, yes, it is. I was thinking OPS. Well, that's crazy. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, the slugging is what? You get two times for a double, three times for a triple. Yeah, it's triple. slugging is, ex, is extra base hits, right? Yeah. It's only, yeah. yeah. So it's like two times the hit for a. Double, three times for a triple, four yeah. times for a homer, I right. think. And OPS is just, I mean, on base is just getting on base. Yeah. Okay. So, int- I don't know how that, I don't know how many players have that, but that's kind of crazy. I guess not too many. Yeah. All right. Uh, number five. This player is hitting 368 when leading off an inning, but just 225 with runners in scoring position. Ooh. Renato Nunez. No. Hans Robert. I was going to tell my yeah, second I guess. I was like, Come on, it's right there. That was my second guess. When leading off an inning, he's been incredible. I feel like I kind of knew that, too, because I was looking up someone's leading off stats. I think it was Renato Nunez. That's why I guessed him. Uh, yeah. Um, tough tough numbers with runners on base for uh, Alberto. Hopefully he gets that figured. But ideal ideal uh, leadoff hitter in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, all right, number six. This player is in the top five in baseball in stolen bases, but is in the top three in caught stealing. Ooh. Well, you can't steal him unless you don't try. So <laughs> true. Also, though, weirdly, Christian Yelich has has like a ridiculous. He's got like almost forty stolen bases and been caught like twice. It's like what? Dang. What? This guy is unbelievable. Yeah, he's a stud. Um, Jonathan VR. Yes. All right. Correct. You almost forget how much uh, how much VR steals bases um, because he. I don't know. It just kind of goes under the radar. Yeah. Um, VR this year. So he also leads the Orioles with. Uh, 43, as is again, as of yesterday, 43 walks and 78 runs scored. Also, 78 runs. That was, that was my question. That was going to be my question. I believe they mentioned this on the broadcast. He's the only Oriole to play in every game this season. Huh? Yeah. Good for him. Good for him. That indeed. was, um, yeah, because I was going to say maybe it goes under the radar because he, yes, he steals bases, but he doesn't get driven in. So it's yes. like, that's part of it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Number seven. We got two more. Cool. What is your, what am I at now? Yeah, I'm, I don't know. Six, I think I'm, th- I think I'm 500. Yes. No. You got. We've, you were we've two done for six. three. You were two for three. Yeah, and then I just got Jonathan Yard. Oh yeah, you did. So okay. I'm three. I'm three for six. I'm three All for right. six. Two more. This player leads the Orioles with nine wild pitch pitches through. <laughs> Another weird stat. Yeah, very weird stat. How did you look these up? Or, like, what were you looking dude, for? Dude, it was a deep dark baseball. Was this all last night. Yesterday. Yeah. Or just while you're at home watching the game. Yeah. It's brutal. Um. I have a life, I promise. Think about um, somebody who's got really good stuff. Somebody who, uh, throughout their career, though, has not been uh, the most controlled pitcher. They've they've tried him out as a uh, starter at times. I was going to say Jimmy Yacobonis. Incorrect. Dang. It is uh, Miguel Castro. Ah. Yacobonis is a good guess, though. I don't know how many he has. I was assuming because he... Well, kind of long, same things with Castro, just because he's kind of like long. Yeah. And like, that's true. you know, probably can, if when you misfire, really you can really it. misfire. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Castro has nine wild pitches this year, had nine last year, but fun fact, he had uh, five hit batters last year and he has hit zero batters. All right. 
2018. Progress. Another weird stat. All right. Uh, so this is to be right, 500. This is to be 500. This is, I'm impressed. All right, go ahead. <laughs> now, but oh, now okay. I'm, you're impressed with yourself? I am, but now I'm nervous that I'm going to botch this last yeah. one. Because again, again how I'm, hard I'm, is getting, this one? I'm getting cocky. Oh, you should probably know this one. Oh, boy. This player is in the first percentile in exit velo and expected slugging percentage, but the 97th percentile in sprint speed, according to StatCast. Ooh. So you hit the ball really hard, but you're slow? No, no, no. Other way around. First percentile is bad. You want to be in the, the high percentiles. Oh. Yeah. So you hit the ball weak, but you're fast. Yep. Uh, ooh, so the- first percentile oh. in exit velo and expected slugging. That's crazy. Um. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> it, hold on. I'm just like, I'm going to go through my quick, quickly in my head. I think I, I, have my, I have a good guess. I don't know. I'll say that. I don't know, but I'm just this is a complete guess. I'm going to go Richie Martin. Yes. yes. That is correct. Yes. That is correct. He's uh, also in the seventh, just the seventh percentile in hard hit percentage and third percentile in expected batting average. But he's in the 97th percentile in sprint speed. He's uh, one of the fastest players in baseball. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Richie Martin Jr. this year. Um, I know, yeah, the offense numbers aren't there. His defense, I mean, I don't think this team would be where they are without his defense. His, his defensive war has to be True. through the roof. Uh, some of the plays we've seen him make yeah. as a rookie, as a Rule 5 rookie. Um, and I think the bat will come. Yeah. I really think. I think he's shown flashes. He's at least making, I mean, way better contact. I don't know if he's, I mean, obviously not that high of, in terms of exit velo, but he's at least making more contact and getting, creeping that BA right. a little higher. Well, and so I look back at Hanser Alberto, too, because obviously another guy who, you know, doesn't have a whole lot of power, but just gets on base a ton because he can just find holes, hit it where they ain't. Alberto is in just the second percentile in exit velo and a first percentile in hard hit percentage, but he's in the 89th percentile in expected batting average, All right. which is just crazy because it's yeah. like he he hits literally hits the ball where they ain't. Like yeah. he does not hit the ball very hard, but he finds holes. So maybe that's a potential path, potential path at least for now for Richie Martin, yeah. just to figure out what Hanser Alberto is doing that is allowing him to just get on base and and find the hole. Yeah. Because obviously Martin is having a hard time getting uh, hard contact. But when he gets on base, I mean, he can fly. He, can. he, he had that triple against the Red Sox. Where mm-hmm. he, um, unbelievable. I yeah. mean, the, the guy is lightning fast. He's got that makeup. I mean, again, because the numbers aren't there yet, he can't be this high in the bedding anymore. But he has the makeup to be a solid leadoff guy at some point, I feel like. I hope so, yeah. Um, and Maybe and, kind of model his game after... Trey Turner down the road a little bit. Yeah. Kind of small stature, sneaky pop, but fast. Yeah. And, and can get on base and, and cause some havoc. And he's getting an opportunity. I yeah. mean, he, yeah, the, the I mean, coaches are obviously, and, you know, part of that came with the fact that he was a rule five guy, so they wanted to keep him for a certain number of games. But he's still getting opportunities. It's just a matter of making the most of them at some point. Again, it, that, that, that glove, man, I think he, it has made it impossible for Brandon Hyde to keep him out of the lineup for more than a couple games at a time. It's exactly. just he's his defense up the middle is just way too valuable at yeah, this point. Exactly. Especially how, you know, unfortunately, the defense in other areas for the Orioles haven't been that great. Yeah. And so if he's your best defender, when other areas are lacking, you really need him out there. Yeah, true. At a, at a viable position, too, so. Anything else you want to add uh, after your first round of guess that or Do you like that game? I like should that we game bring a that lot. Game back? Bring, let's try, try it in a month. Let some of these yeah. numbers kind of dilute settle, a little bit. Settle themselves. Let's, let's uh, get some new ones up there. Yeah, I did like that game. I, I like a little random trivia like that. Yeah. That's fun. Uh, so, yeah, that just about does it for the Mass and All Access podcast. Uh, you can listen to us on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Play. You can watch us on Mass and All Access's Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter. At Bobby underscore Blanco. I'm um, at Paul Mancano. Give us a like. Five stars. We will, might be able to read out your uh, review if you give us five stars. Review. All that good stuff. Uh, but thanks for tuning in to the Mass and All Access podcast. Brought to you by Marymount University. Visit MarymountSaints.com to learn more about our student athletes and programs today.